Hey, this is Stephen Van Campen Lewis, and it is August 22nd, 2020, uh, and I'm doing a quick uh, PET potting method update about uh, how my catacetums look uh, in the PET method, that the traditional one that I've posted about, as well as this sort of newer method that I'm trying out now uh, with great success. Um, but first of all, I'm going to start out with um, a quick recap of what PET method is. Basically, you have a, a clear plastic bottle, maybe a, a reused Coke bottle or something. You put, punch some holes in the bottom so that there's a water well there. Then you add an inorganic media to sit in the water well uh, while it's holding water during the crowing season. And then you have maybe one layer or maybe several layers of different organic media above there, which basically stay wet throughout the growing season. Um, but you know, I, I've been doing this, this potting method for some years and I'm, I've been switching up, uh, I've been doing some experimentation here this year and um, with some success. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the sort of traditional method for PET. First I'm going to empty out some water here so I, my lap doesn't get all wet. But this is a catacetum calcashoe from um, from Stephen Moffat that I got, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago. Maybe one year ago. And basically, what you see here, like I said earlier, you know, this is this clear plastic bottle. Poked a hole in the bottom, and so there's water in here all the time. Uh, and down here I have EcoWeb. I think you can kind of see it, maybe. I don't know, the glare is kind of bad. But this one was potted in this method this spring. And then we have Orchiata bark here. And then on top we have sphagnum. And I'm just going to let you check out the roots. Just ridiculous. Big fat roots all over the place. The plants just love this method. Um, you know, I like to stake them when I pot them in here so that they don't wiggle around. Here's the new growth. Um, I was using purely organic media for the first half of the year, and this week I switched over to um, a time release or slow release, I guess I should say, which is uh, I use NutriCoat and then a calcium magnesium supplement. And you can kind of see in here, the NutriCoat is mixed in there with the calcium and magnesium supplement. <clears throat> So in these pots with sphagnum, uh, I can put them in here and not have to worry about um, sort of overflowing the, the, the fertilizer pellets. Because what happens when you water these is they fill with water and then the water kind of comes out the top and it can take the pellets with it. So that's what I want, I want to talk a little bit about right now is when you're doing the PET method, leave an inch in the top so that as you're watering, the water can fill up and then slowly recede back down. Um, that's probably the, the biggest tip that I've found um, is that once the water fills up, it can, it can take the fertilizer with it as it's spilling over the sides here. And that's, that's not super useful as you can imagine. Another thing I want to point out is, is you can see the algae is starting to build up. So I, like I said, I planted it this spring. You can still see a lot of the clear a lot of the roots here. This is solid because those roots are really filling up those spaces. But you can see that the algae is growing down there in the bottom. And I'll show you here on, um, on these other pots that, uh, that that's okay. That's, that's normal. The, the plant's not going to be sad with algae. If you don't like the way it looks, you know, uh, that's on you. The plant doesn't care. I want to show you another older plant. Again, I'm going to have to empty this out here a little bit so I don't get a lap full of water. Uh, this is Catacetum shunkii. As you can see, um, this plant is sort of mounded up above the potting media. I think what happens is the chickadees come along and take media out of my pots. Um, but it's okay in this case because you can kind of see that it gives a space there for the water to build up and then sink down. Again, this is, so this, 
particular plant um, started growing this spring, finished its growth, uh, put out two spikes, and is now putting out two new growths. So this this will be growth two and three for 2020, which is great. Um, and then, I don't know if you can see, I don't need that little basket anymore. You can see the little pellets. They're not gonna overflow because there's enough space here in the bottom for the water to kind of build up and not flow over the top. Um, and again, over time, th so this this was potted up this way last year, and you can see it's just it's just brown and green. Algae totally covers everything, but I do know that there's a ton of roots in here. Let's see if I can do if I can show you. You can see this monster root starting to grow back up the side of the pot, so it's actually sitting in the water well all the time. Uh, this is Catacetum shunkii. I can't remember if I said that earlier, but. Uh, um, so this is what uh, a year or two old uh, PET method in um, in sphagnum, the traditional three-layer method with sphagnum on top. So uh, I would repot this uh, this coming spring. The sphagnum is starting to break down after its after its second year. And finally, I'm going to show you this large one. Uh, I just made a video about this, just the flowers, so I'm not going to talk much about the flowers, but it's Catacetum maculatum. It's a large plant. Um, this, I think, is its third growing season um, This in this particular pot. so um, And there is a problem with leaving your catacetums in a pot like this for several seasons, and it, it's a good problem. And the problem is there's too many roots. So here are the flowers, yay! See my other video if you want to see those a little bit more. Um, but this thing is just packed. This whole little vase is just completely packed with roots. So when I water, I have to water over and over and over again because the water doesn't go, it doesn't sink down. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Um, so it is a bit of a problem. It's a good problem. Having too many roots is always a good problem, but it is what it is. But I'm gonna take you in here and see if you can see a lot of those roots or not come down and just see this thing is just choke choked full of roots um, and they're all the way down to the bottom into the water well you can see the algae build up you can kind of see the glare from the sun but I, I think you guys get the, the point there you know that that particular plant is exceptionally happy. Uh, it's got this spike coming. It's got another one that's popping out here. This is one of my plants that sometimes will grow several times in a season. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if I put out a new growth here very shortly. And then the new growth would continue on into November, uh, which will be great because then I will get that many more flowers next year. So I do want to talk about uh, the newer sort of updated version that I've done uh, of the PET method, uh, I still use the clear pot. I still poke holes in the bottom with the the water well at the bottom. Um, but instead of using three layers, I use the inorganic media in the bottom, which is still the EcoWeb. Uh, and then I just put um, cedar mulch, uh, uh, not cedar mulch, uh, cypress mulch, excuse me, on top. And it's not the high quality cypress mulch uh, where it's just cypress and chunks. I have found out that I use the, the low quality crappy version uh, that I got at Home Depot. Uh, that may or may not be good for cattleyas, so I've unpotted some of my, uh, my cattleyas that I was experimenting on and put them back into Orchiata. But, catacetums are a different animal. They don't mind rapidly rotting media. And in fact, really like it. That's, that's kind of how they grow in the wild. Uh, so I've left them and uh, I'm happy to report great success. Again, I have to sort of empty the water out the bottom of this. This is Catacetum Fong Sing that I got from my friend William Green when he swung by my greenhouse uh, in December of 2019. And he brought this as a gift. This now monstrous thing. Um, and you can see what the flowers look like of this particular plant on William Green's channel over on YouTube. Um, big, really cool looking dark flowers, but check this out. Look at those roots. 
I mean, you, you just, it just doesn't get better than that. The PET method is hands down the best method for growing catacetums. It's easy, it's cheap. Um, maybe it's not as attractive as having them in a, in a pot with sphagnum, but boy, your growths are always gonna be much bigger, much more robust. I mean, you know, William Green grew this one really, really nicely last year in his conditions. And it's already, this growth is already larger than the, the previous growth here. And we still have plenty of growing season left. And I, I really do attribute that to the, the PET method. They really seem to, the roots don't mind to see, don't seem to mind this um, wood media that may be of lower quality. You can see some mold growing there. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, these plants don't care about that. It's not a problem. I know a lot of folks kind of have a tendency to freak out with mold and, and think that it's a bad thing and it's not. I'm going to show you another plant. Oh, I want to show you actually, so this is Fong Sing, which is sort of a, a complex hybrid of, of Peliatum and Expansum back on itself. And I think there's a few other things mixed in there, but it's basically Peliatum and Expansum crossed back and forth to each other a bunch of times. Um, and look at the roots. The roots are, are really fat in this one. I really just want to compare and contrast to a Chloas sedum which is a catacetum crossed by cloacea. Cloaceas have, have thinner roots, and that trait is very often passed on to their, their progeny. And I'm gonna show you this guy. This one is also potted in the newer method. And you can see how much thinner those roots are. And you can also see how abundant those roots are. Um, you know, this, this is what you want. This is, this looks great. Um, there's fewer roots over on this side, but they're still there. There's way more roots on this side, probably all coming from this bulb here. Um, and again, it's just this, this um, cypress mulch that I bought at Home Depot for very, 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 very cheap. And then I've, I've recently, this week, replaced my uh, purely organic fertilizer with the, the NutriCoat time release for the second half of the year. And that was that was planned, that was by design. I wanted to have those nutrients, the sort of Kickstarter from the purely organic um, in the spring and the first half of the year. And then the second half of the year, I, I planned to switch over to time release. So uh, all is going according to plan. You see a lot of the cloaceas, they'll add these sort of nest of roots on top and these little aerial roots. And, and what they'll do is they'll grow up. If, if this was a plant in the wild and it was just a cloacea, um, it would put these sort of nest of roots to come up. Whew, almost lost the spike on that one. And, um, and capture leaves. So this will create a, a nest of leaves and detritus that will sort of rot and, and act as fertilizer for this plant. And so you can kind of see that's happening right here. You can see this leaf was kind of caught in here as, as the oak leaf falls. You know, it'll stay in there and it'll start to rot and provide fertilizer for this plant. So, um, you know, basically just wanted to give you guys an update of, of, of A, the benefits of, of PET method and B, you know, where your catacetums ideally are in their, their growth stage right now. You can see that these growths are, are getting to be probably close to as big as they'll get. Um, you can see that this one is even bigger than all these other ones over here. I'm dripping on myself again. Um, and so, you know, as we get more into September and October, a lot of your catacetums might just stop growing and they'll just stay green, keep watering them, keep fertilizing them, and then start thinking about um, backing off on the fertilizer when you see those first lower leaves start to drop off. Uh, until basically you have no fertilizer around the time that half the leaves are gone. And then you'll just keep watering and, and then slowly back off from the watering until until the end of December. And then you're not watering at all. And it, then your plants will be either in full dormancy or should get to full, full dormancy fairly quickly. And, and that's it. You know, it's, 
it's a hot sticky time of the year and while it's uncomfortable for us humans um, it can be it can be the really the best time for the catastetums they just love the heat love the sun love the wetness love the fertilizer um, they are summertime orchids and they just they just thrive in these conditions um, so anyway thumbs up uh, subscribe if, if you enjoy these videos and i'll talk to you later bye